Today, I'm going to show you how to do this cool looking glitch slash type on effect. What's up guys, my name is Eli Clark, I'm a sports videographer and creative at App State, and in this video today I'm going to be showing you how to do this glitch on slash type on effect. Now I've used this um, in a couple of my videos, but a lot of people have asked me how I do it, so I figured I'd go ahead and show y'all, give y'all kind of the sauce behind it. But I haven't seen many good tutorials on YouTube for this, so hopefully I'm the first one. Um, hopefully this will help y'all out. Um, I will be doing all of this in After Effects. I do edit in DaVinci mainly. But I do all my VFX and After Effects, so this whole tutorial will be in After Effects. So go ahead and open After Effects and just follow along with me. So hopping right into After Effects, the first thing that you're going to want to do is find your clip. Now keep in mind, this effect is only going to be on like a second or maybe a second and a half of the clip. So you don't need a really long part um, to do this effect on. So like my clip right here is literally like a minute or a second and a half long. But you can see here is the whole clip it's literally just a kind of push in on this eybl logo right here now you can do it with as many letters as you want as you saw by the example um, earlier in the video i did it with like four letters and i also did it with a lot more but depending on how many letters you have it's just going to take more time so go ahead and import your clip into after effects cut it down zoom in do whatever you need to do to it i'm going to go ahead and add a lut um, this is from my lut pack it's lut number four if you are interested in picking up my lut pack i will have a link in the description um, down below so you can go check that out but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and throw on a lut just for um, purposes or tutorial purposes so the first thing that you're going to want to do is identify how many letters you have in your effect so we have the E, the Y, the B, and the L that we're going to want to do this effect on. So you're going to make a copy of your base layer for every one of those letters. So I'm going to go ahead and show you here. I'm going to rename this to be my base layer right here. And then I'm going to hit Control D to make a duplicate. So E, Y, B, L. So we're going to just rename these just so we can keep them organized. So now we have them renamed to E, Y, B, and L. We have a separate layer for each letter. So what you're gonna want to do is just zoom in on your clip where the letters are. So if you don't know how to zoom in, you just literally scroll on your mouse wheel and it will zoom in. Um, let's go ahead and put this all the way to full quality so that we can see it better. And then if you hold H on your keyboard, uh, it will bring up the hand tool and you can just click and drag so that you can center it up or whatever you need to do. And then all you're gonna do is make a mask for each letter. So make sure you go to the first frame in your After Effects composition and we're gonna start with the E since that's our first letter. You're going to come up here to the pen tool, which is how you make the mask. And we're just going to make a rough mask around this E right here. So I'm literally just going to make like a rectangle mask around the E and that should be pretty good. Now you'll see if we scrub through this clip, the mask doesn't move, but the E does move. So what we have to do is actually track the mask. So in order to track the mask, if you come over here to your tracker tab, if you don't see that, come up to window and come down to tracker and make sure that's checked. And then it will bring up this window right here. So basically what you do is if you hit this play button right here, it will automatically track through your clip and track the E, but sometimes that's not too accurate. So I like to hit this arrow right here and it just tracks forward one frame. So if you track forward one frame, as you can see right here, it just follows the E. But let's say you don't like how that tracked, you can come up here, click on this point and move it um, or adjust it how you like and then continue tracking. Hit either this button to track through or you can hit this to track one frame at a time. So I'm going to do this for every single letter. Once you're done with the E, you're going to come up here to the Y layer and you're going to make a mask around the Y. Just a rough mask, like I said, like that. And then you're going to go ahead and track the Y all the way through and then do that for every single letter and then come back, or I'm gonna do that for every single letter and then come back and show you what to do after that. Okay, so now that we've tracked every single layer, what we're gonna to want to do is go ahead and track this base layer. So what you wanna do is make a mask around the EYBL, the whole thing, all four letters at once, and you're gonna track that. So I've already actually gone ahead and tracked that. If I throw this on third, you can see the EYBL is already tracked. It's not perfect. I did the tracking pretty quickly just for this tutorial purposes, but the longer you take on it, the better it will look. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and track this um, all together on the base layer. And then what you're going to want to do is turn off the EYBL layers right here so that you can actually see through to this clip. And as you can see, it's transparent. Now, if you can't see through, if it's still just showing that, you're going to want to come down to mask 
and make sure the blend mode is on subtract. It might already be on none or add, so make sure you hit subtract on that. And then I'm gonna make my mask feather five right here. So that way it just softens up the edges a little bit so it's not such a harsh um, like fill in when we fill in this transparent part. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So now what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to content aware fill this. So what you wanna do is once again, go to your content aware fill tab right here. If you don't see it, go up to window and find your content aware. I think it's right here. Yeah, find content aware, check that on. And then this will pop up. So what you're gonna do is hit create reference frame. Now what create reference frame is going to do is open up Photoshop or Photoshop beta, whichever one. And then I'm gonna come up here to this polygonal lasso tool and I just click, right click on it and click the second one. And we're gonna zoom in on this and we're just gonna make a rough selection of this transparent part right here. So, like that. And then we're gonna hit generate a fill and just let Photoshop do its thing. Okay, so as you can see, this is obviously not what we want, but it does give us a couple options if you come down here and click. Um, so none of these look great. This one, I'd say this one probably looks the closest, but all we're gonna do is hit shift, click this, and then we're gonna merge these layers together. And we're gonna go ahead and select this and do the generated fill again. So this time I'm gonna try to be a little more precise and we're just trying to get it to where it's just straight solid green. So we're gonna generate a fill again and see what Photoshop spits out. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting closer, but still not perfect. We're gonna merge these layers once again, and we're just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing and hit generate a fill for a third time. Okay, so after that third time, we have what we want. We just have this green solid background and we don't have the letters. So that this is gonna be the reference frame for After Effects to fill in the rest of our clip. So make sure um, when you get what you want, you hit Control S, that way it will save in Photoshop and After Effects can read it from Photoshop. So go back into After Effects and as you can see, it's filled this in, but only on this one frame. If we zoom forward, you can see that there is nothing else. It's only filling in this one frame. So if you want to, you can go through the clip, maybe like halfway and hit click create reference frame again and make another reference frame and then maybe go all the way to the end, make another reference frame. That way it has more frames to reference. But for this tutorial sake, I'm just gonna make one reference frame and see what it gives us. So once you have your reference frame, you're gonna hit generate, a, or generate fill layer right here. And then it's gonna bring up this analyzing thing and just let this uh, completely finish and then you'll see the results afterwards. Okay, so now that that's finished, it has given us a fill layer right here. And if we scroll through, we can see that it fills in the whole clip. Now there's a little bit of, um, like you can see a little bit of whatever you would call this discoloration right here, but it's not a big deal, especially if we zoom out. Um, let's go to fit right here. You can see, you see it a little bit, but that's not gonna be the main focus of the clip. And the effect will probably be done by that point anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Like I said, if you wanna take a little bit longer on the selection or make more reference frames, you can do that to make it perfect. But for right now, this is pretty good. So now that we have um, our reference or our fill layer and our reference frames, we're going to start animating the letters and this is where this all comes together. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our E layer and drag it above the fill and the reference frame. And then make sure we turn that on. And if you click this drop down on the E and come down to this mask, you're gonna make the you're gonna want to make the blending mode say add. So what add does is show us only what's in the mask, which obviously is just the E, because this layer is for E. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the Y, B, and L. So bring our Y above the E, turn that layer on, and make this say add. And then same thing for the B. Bring this up here make the mask say add oh it already does okay perfect and then bring the l up here turn this on and make the mask say add so it already does that too so what i like to do now is go through and make every layer a different color so we're going to go red for e yellow for y uh pink for b and green for l so we have each layer as a different color so Next, you're gonna to wanna to just play it and figure out where you want your animation to end. So just kind of imagine the letters glitching on. So we're gonna say right here, we're gonna come here to a layer, 
marker and add marker. So we're just gonna want to end every single clip at this marker right here. So if I turn off these letters, you can see it's just affecting the letter that corresponds to the layer. So E is just affecting E, Y is just affecting Y. So we have all the letters separated, which is exactly what we want. I also forgot to mention, to make this look a little bit better, come down here in the mask and just feather the mask to maybe four or five for each of them. And that will make it look just a little bit smoother. But here's where the effect actually comes to life. We're gonna start animating these letters. So what you're gonna do is just literally be as random as possible. So if you hit control and after effects and you hit the arrow key, you can go forward frames. So let's say I want this E to start off the screen. I'm gonna hit control shift D to split. And then I'm gonna delete this first frame. And then we're gonna to wanna to have it on for the next two frames. So go one, two frames forward, control shift D. I wanna have it off for the next three frames. One, two, three, control shift D, and then delete this. So as you can see, starts off, flashes on, and then here we go. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five frames I want it on, one, two frames I want it off, and then we're gonna go ahead and make an opacity keyframe for this. So if you hit T on your keyboard, it brings up opacity, make this zero, and then we're gonna go all the way to the end of the transition and make this 100. So as you can see, we have our E animated right there. Now this might be a little too long actually. I think we're gonna move the marker a little bit. I think the transition is just a little long. So yeah, that looks pretty good. You see the E's flashing on, we just have it randomly flashing. So now that the E's done, you can close all those and we're gonna move on to Y. There's no right or wrong way to do this at all. You literally just wanna be as random as possible. So don't try to necessarily follow along with this. Um, but just delete parts of the uh, letter and keep parts on, make opacity keyframes, whatever you wanna do, anything will really work. So I'm gonna come over to Y, I'm gonna go three frames forward, delete that. I'm gonna have this on for a few frames, off for a frame or two. Um, we'll have this on, we'll turn it off one more frame, and then that should be good. So now we have the E and the Y both animated. You can see they're doing different things. Now, if you want certain letters to do the same things, obviously you just follow the pattern that you did for the E. So if I wanted the B to have the same pattern as the E, I'll just go a frame forward, cut it, and just match it up to this E, if that makes sense. But I don't want all my letters to have the same like animation, so I'm just gonna be as random with it as possible. We're just gonna go here, delete. Let's make a keyframe. We're gonna start this opacity at like 60 or 50. We'll go 50, go two frames forward make this 100 and then we'll cut um, go two frames forward and then that should be good so now we have the e y and b and for the last one we're going to do l so we're going to go one two three four frames forward one two um we're going to have it flash on real quick for a frame off for three frames and then on off for another frame and then back on. So as you can see, we have all the letters animated now and that is your transition. So the effect is only really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15 frames long, but the clip is a lot longer. So the effect does not need to take long. It's just a subtle little effect, but people will be like, whoa, like what just happened that's basically the goal of this effect so as you can see every letter is animated and the eybl just has a little more spice to it now than just a solid push in shot but that is basically it for the effect so if i make this a fit and i just play all the way through you can see that we have the effect done here so hopefully this helped you all out if i went through anything a little too quick just drop a comment with a question um, below and i'll try to get back to you as soon as possible or you can dm me on instagram my instagram link will be in the description but i hope this really did help you all out if it did make sure you drop a like make sure you subscribe and i will see y'all in the next video